a pregnant 18-year-old named Savannah Soto was reported missing on December 22, 2023, and was last seen in a gray Kia Optima just days before Christmas. Reports later stated that her boyfriend, Matthew Guiera, had also been missing. The families of the two were shocked to find out what had happened to the young parents-to-be. There isn't a dry eye at this northwest side apartment complex. It's a Merry Christmas, but it's not too merry for us right now. Emotions are raw as several look in the direction of Savannah Soto's apartment. Everyone here, including her grandmother, Rachel, hoping for any clue on her location. We're entitled to know something about her. We love her, we miss her, whatever's going on. Let her come home so we can have a Merry Christmas with her. Family says the 18 year old mother to be hasn't been heard from since Friday, the day before she was set to be induced. I just need to know that she's okay. Savannah's mother, Gloria Cordova, put out a desperate plea for information about her daughter and filed a police report with Leon Valley over the weekend. Cordova says since last speaking to her daughter, there's been no contact with Savannah. I just want her home. I'm worried about the baby. If she's even had the baby. Gloria says she believes Savannah is in trouble. There's no reason why she would just get up and go off and do that. Especially in light of her 15 year old brother Ethan being killed last year. She knows what it, we, I went through with Ethan, and I know she went, doesn't want me to go through this again. I hope everyone here to look for Savannah has. To God hear my prayers and bring my granddaughter and my great grandson back home. That's what we want. We're looking at it right now is a very, very perplexing crime scene. We start tonight with team coverage after the search ends for missing mom to be Savannah Soto. This afternoon, her body was found along with her boyfriend, Matthew Guerra. Thanks for joining us tonight for News 4 at 10. I'm Jonathan Martinez. Tonight, that investigation is believed to be a potential murder as San Antonio Police Chief William McManus reveals they believe two bodies found inside of a vehicle may have been there for three to four days. Soto was last seen on Friday, December the 22nd on the northwest side. Since then, family and friends have been searching for the teen who was believed to be in danger just a day before she was set to be induced and have her baby. Over the weekend, Soto's mother pleaded for the community to come forward with any information about her missing daughter. The discovery of the two bodies earlier today by police leaving Soto's family devastated. Many of her relatives were at the scene and understandably left heartbroken. News for San Antonio's Amanda Henderson is live where that discovery was made with more. Amanda. Yeah, Jonathan, you can imagine it was just an outpouring of grief out here for hours today. Family members only really leaving maybe about an hour or two ago. Many of them just staring at the location of where the car was. In disbelief that Savannah and her boyfriend were likely found inside dead. The search for Savannah Soto and her boyfriend has come to a tragic end. San Antonio police believe Savannah and her boyfriend are the two people found dead in 2013 Kia Optima at a northwest side apartment complex. I'm just, my heart is broken right now. And nothing that we're going to replace her. We first introduced you to Rachel Soto last night. Her pleas were simple to help bring her pregnant granddaughter Savannah Soto home. Family has been looking for the 18 year old since Saturday when she didn't show up to be induced. Less than 24 hours later, Rachel's pleas are now for you to remember her granddaughter for who she was. She was a good girl. She loved sports. She played basketball with her brothers. But she was a heart. She was beautiful inside and out. SAPD Chief William McManus says he's unable to confirm if either of the dead are pregnant and calls the case complexing. I, I don't want to go into details about that, but it, but again, I, I will repeat that it is. It, it appears to be a very complex crime scene. The case originated in Leon Valley, who sent out a clear alert. We asked Chief McManus why an alert wasn't sent out in San Antonio. This originating in Leon Valley, that's why I came out from there, the alert, clear alert. Was there ever any indication that SAPD should have put out a clear alert of their own? No. Tonight, Savannah's family is left devastated after she is the second person they have lost in two years. Last year, her 15 year old brother Ethan was shot and killed. Now they're hoping as days pass, answers will come. We were supposed to celebrate Christmas with her and baby. Um, all she wanted, all she wanted was that baby. She didn't think about anything else. Um, she was so ready to be a mom. And just adding to the heartbreak tonight, that family member who you heard from right before we just came back on air, 
She tells us tonight that she was actually tipped off to where the car was, called officials, but got here before them. So she went to the car, opened the door, saw a gruesome scene, and she even said that she couldn't believe the fact that Savannah could be dead. She thought maybe she had just passed out. She says that tonight they are just reeling with all of the information that is coming in. San Antonio police has taken over the investigation at this point, so as more information becomes available, we will bring it to you. Continuing our coverage tonight on the discovery of the bodies of Soto and her boyfriend. At this point, the police chief is not ready to say what kind of case detectives have on their hands or exactly what happened that led to the deaths. All that is still being investigated. New tonight, the I-team's Mariah Medina obtained court records that revealed Soto's boyfriend had been charged with violence against Soto in the past. Mariah? That's right, Savannah Soto's boyfriend Matthew Guerra had been charged with assaulting her on Christmas Day of last year. Guerra received a year of probation and that was expected to end in June of 2024. But court documents show Guerra picked up more charges along the way. A violation report obtained by the I-team shows that Guerra was charged with unlawful carry of a weapon, reckless driving and evading arrest. His possession of a gun, a violation of his probation, which prohibited him from having guns. Another condition of his probation was to not have harmful or injurious contact with Soto, his girlfriend. Police have provided no information indicating Guerra was involved in his girlfriend's death, but police not really saying much. And detectives right now are looking at this as a possible murder, and uh, but we don't know for sure. As for whether there were any firearms in the car? We don't know that yet. We have not been able to move the bodies. Kenwood Park holds so much meaning for the Soto family. We cry, we laugh. Think about the good time, the sad time. Rachel Soto finds herself here today with us, thinking of and talking about another sad time. We sit at a bench dedicated to her 15-year-old grandson, Ethan Soto. He was killed last year. Now Rachel is here talking about the loss of his sister, her granddaughter, Savannah Soto. I think I'm going to get up on my nightmare and Miguel's going to be there. I didn't think I was going to go through this again and here I am again. Savannah and her boyfriend, Matthew Guerra, were found dead yesterday in a Kia Optima at a Northwest apartment complex. The discovery brought a tragic end to a search for the missing mother-to-be. It was said to be induced last Saturday. She was looking forward to being a mom. A mom for the first time. Police say the unborn child died as well. And I just wish at least, at least I would have been able to see him and hold him, but I'll never have that privilege of doing that. But much, what much more do I need to use? One day after Savannah and Matthew's bodies were found, Rachel says they're left with questions, especially as they don't know if the mother-to-be had any connections to the apartment complex where the car was found. But if there is somebody on the run, you have a conscience, do the right thing and turn yourself in. Rachel is working with Pamela Allen in Eagle's Flight to put together a vigil for Savannah and her unborn child. I've heard the cries of so many moms and grandmas, and it still shakes us, the soul to hear those cries. Their cries, Rachel says, she is experiencing for a second time, finding strength through prayer and Ethan's tree, which will soon also honor more of the Soto family. And I know eventually we'll be adding something else there. As she had seven, seven brothers, and she was the only girl. She was the only girl. She was everything. She was everything. Law enforcement sources tell me that San Antonio police didn't find a firearm or the cell phone of Savannah Soto's boyfriend, Matthew Guetta, in the car that the pair were found in Tuesday afternoon. Sources also sharing that Guetta's body was found in the back seat of the vehicle while Soto was in the front passenger seat with a child carrier on her lap. I talked to Guetta's family who tell me everything that they did to find the expectant parents and frustrations with that process. But once it was like the 2, 2.30 p.m. mark, we started, started panicking. Panic and the nonstop calling and racing home, and racing over there and... Calling police. Gabriel and Raquel Guerra say they called 911 when they sensed their son and his girlfriend were in trouble. The husband and wife who live in Bear County initially tried to file missing persons reports with the Bear County Sheriff's Office. 
Soto's family, who live in San Antonio, tried to file with San Antonio police. But because Guerra and Soto lived in Leon Valley, the report had to be taken by Leon Valley police. Well, I was told that they were trying to get three agencies, uh, all the information they had, and combine them into one report. As this was happening, Gabriel says he was racing to his son's apartment, kicking down the door after he didn't get an answer, fearing the worst. The candle. The, uh, the candle was on. Um... That was another sign that they had a candle on. Gabriel says the lit candle and Savannah's diaper bag being left behind told them something was wrong. The house, he says, showing no signs of a struggle. Gabriel says he asked the Leon Valley police detective assigned to the case if they could track his son's cell phone location. He says a detective told him it was unlikely a judge would grant a warrant for that because there weren't exigent circumstances. And he basically said they're adults and they want to disappear, they can disappear. And again, I reminded him, you know, the, the baby's overdue has been overdue. They missed their due date. And uh, to me, that's a life threatening, uh, you know, it's, it's it, we, there should have been more urgency. We reached out to the Leon Valley detective assigned to the missing persons case to see if a warrant was ever sought. The detective replied that he was instructed by the Leon Valley chief of police to direct questions about the investigation to San Antonio police. He stated that he was not authorized to make any further comments. I never knew a pain like this existed. You know, you, you hear about a uh, parent losing a child and you're like, man, I can't imagine what they're going through. It's, it's exactly how it is. You, know, you can't imagine it. The couple expected to become first time grandparents this holiday season, now mourning a son, a grandson, and their would be grandson's mother. I just hope um, we can get to the bottom of this and just to be served because I just can't fathom how anybody can do that to a pregnant woman. I, 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 I just can't get that out of my head. While Soto's murder would be considered capital murder under Texas law because she was pregnant, San Antonio police shared a synopsis which lists Guerra, Soto, as well as her unborn son as victims, apparently signaling law enforcement's belief that both Guerra and Soto were murdered. We have a video here that we're going to share with you. We have already put it out on social media. You may have already seen it, but we're going to run this video here today. Uh, we are hoping that uh, someone is able to identify the individuals that are seen in this video. Mourners gathered for a prayer vigil in memory of 18-year-old Savannah Soto and her unborn child, Favian. The vigil took place at Kenwood but Park. Like Around 4 p.m., there was a dove release as well as many family members and friends speaking about the young girl taken too soon. Her grandmother said a tree will be planted at the park in Savannah and Favian's memory. It will be placed next to her brother Ethan's tree. He was tragically killed two years ago. All of us having this visual right now, we should be celebrating her birth, the birth of her son. We can't do that anymore. We won't see her anymore. She is in a better place with her brother Ethan, but it's, our lives will never be the same. We were barely recover, recovering from Ethan's loss a year ago, and now we're going through this again. If she suffered, don't know if she suffered. Don't know what her thoughts were. Don't know if she was yelling, if she was screaming. I don't know, and we'll never know. All I want for my great, my granddaughter is justice. Family members we spoke to are aware of the surveillance video police released this afternoon. They say they don't know anyone who drives a truck.
that looks like that. We've done it at least once in our office uh, because I believe that that was the appropriate thing to do. Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez is talking about the death penalty. In his five years in office, his prosecutors have requested on only one occasion that the defendant in a capital murder case be put to death if found guilty. That lone instance, the case of Otis McCain, who murdered San Antonio Police Detective Benjamin Marconi outside public safety headquarters in 2016. McCain was sentenced to death in 2021, though the DA's decision to seek the death penalty wasn't made alone. I reserve the right uh, to seek the death penalty in any case that I believe, uh, when I say I, I have a Capital Crimes Committee and we all uh, have a vote in deciding whether or not to seek uh, the death penalty on any individual. Gonzalez says when a prosecutor gets a capital murder case, they review the file and present to the committee. One of the things that the committee considers, obviously, is is the factors that make this a capital crime, how egregious the offense is. With capital cases, once a defendant is found guilty, the DA's office then separately argues special issues illustrating why the person should be put to death as opposed to life without the possibility of parole. Whether the defendant is a continuing threat to society is one of the special issues. Another special issue is, is whether or, or not there's any mitigation against the death penalty. So those are factors that we discuss in the, in, the, in the committee. In Texas, there are a number of acts that qualify as capital murder, killing a pregnant person or killing multiple people, like in the deaths of Savannah Soto and her boyfriend, Matthew Guerra. But in some cases, people can be charged with the crime despite never pulling the trigger. But anybody who assists or agrees to uh, help out or solicits or encourages uh, a criminal act is can be li liable for the entire thing. Police released this video of persons of interest in their murders yesterday asking the public for help identifying them. One behind the wheel of Soto's Kia and the other exiting the driver's seat of a truck handing a towel to the driver of the Kia police believe to wipe the side of the Kia down. Uh, everybody is treated the same and charged with the same thing. So uh, clearly the folks in that video uh, were aiding and abetting uh, somebody who'd gotten away with murder at the very least. So they need to be concerned that they could be charged with all of it. Locke says with the death penalty on the table and police likely closing in, the suspect or suspects should get an attorney and voluntarily turn themselves in. It is uh, something that, that people often tell themselves that they can they can uh, outsmart law enforcement or they can uh, do something clever. Uh, but but many times the, the cleverest thing you could do is to contact a lawyer. The DA says it's too early to say definitively whether he'll pursue the death penalty in any arrests that might result in this case. However, he said given the callousness of this crime, it's certainly one the committee would consider. The case is being followed nationwide and theories are floating around social media. That's not helping the situation that's not helping the process like all they're doing is slowing down the process. Savannah Soto's family says while they appreciate so many people wanting justice for Savannah, Matthew and their unborn son, they also say all the attention is overwhelming and at times hurtful. As Fox Essays Stephanie Esquivel explains, they are worried misinformation on social media could interfere with the investigation. You know that some person was involved or whoever was it was involved. We yes, of course we ask that you come forward. But if you're just assuming or try oh yes, this dude looks like him and he no, like you don't need it. Savannah Soto's aunt Valerie Mendoza hopes anyone with information on who could be responsible for the deaths of Savannah, her boyfriend Matthew Guerra, and their unborn son Fabian will step forward. With more than 150,000 members on the Find Savannah Soto Facebook group page, Mendoza says the rumors, theories, and misinformation going around needs to stop because she's afraid it could hurt the investigation. You're just slowing down the process and that's not going to help any, like, you know, of course they have leads and they want to look into every single one. Because detectives are following every lead, Mendoza says she hopes out of respect, people will stop speculating about what happened. If you're not 100%, you know, about it, then we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. Like, just let the detectives do what they need to do. And I believe from the bottom of my heart that they're going to get who did this. Instead of opening Christmas presents and celebrating the new year, the Soto family is now having to make funeral arrangements for Savannah and Fabian. It's something Eagles Flight CEO Pamela Allen is helping the family with. We're offering assistance and support for uh, the mom who's in charge of 
organizing burials for two of her family members. Anderson says the increasing national attention on the case is adding challenges. The vigil held on Thursday for Savannah and Fabian had much larger turnout than expected. We were we were a bit overwhelmed by the amount of people there. And then um, they expect the same response at the um, funeral and burial for Savannah and Fabian. Here right now, I'd give them a big hug. Because <laughs> I miss him. <laughs> and I wish this didn't happen. Tears of pure torment as Matthew Guerra's brothers remember the excitement they say Matthew felt to become a father for the first time. Matthew's father, Gabriel Guerra, and his wife Raquel admit this is not the way they expected to be spending New Year's Day. Never, not in a million years, not in a million years. I possibly thought that I'd be babysitting Fabian for New Year's or something. Like I, me and Savannah talked about so many things we had planned for Fabian. The San Antonio Police Department releasing surveillance video last week that detectives say show two persons of interest that can know what led up to the young family's final moments. Like I said, there's cameras everywhere and, and, and my heart of hearts hopefully it's just a matter of time before um, something is uh, found. Gabriel says investigators told him there is still a lot of evidence to comb through. He says he remains hopeful and confident police will find the person or people responsible. He has a, a, a bunch of uh, videos that he has to go through and it's going to take a while to go through all the evidence and they're waiting for the warrants to come back for the phones to see what other information that can lead from them. Matthew's brothers say they don't understand why no arrests have been made with the tips people have been calling in. The videos are popping out and they're, they're just not doing enough with this investigation by trying to find out who did this. They have all these videos, but they still have no leads. Breaking overnight, a father and son arrested and facing charges in the murder of a pregnant teen and her boyfriend. 19-year-old Christopher Presardio is charged with, the cap with capital murder in the deaths of 18-year-old Savannah Soto and 22-year-old Matthew Guerra. 53-year-old Raymond Presardio is charged with abuse of a corpse, accused of trying to get rid of their bodies. The couple disappeared a day before Soto was scheduled to be induced. Police say Savannah's cell phone led to this big break. They say they were able to find it at the scene and with the help of the Secret Service. They say it led them to information on their suspects. Ramon not talking to our cameras as he was taken to jail. You see that here. He's accused of helping his son dispose of the bodies of Soto, her unborn son Fabian, and boyfriend Matthew Guerra after they were killed. Police say the son, Christopher, is the one who killed the three during a drug deal. On December 28th, police released that surveillance video, you saw it here, of that truck pulling up next to the missing Kia with the bodies inside in the back of the apartment. Since then, they say they have gotten a lot of tips. There was a lot of misinformation out there. These two individuals are, to, are the only sus suspects that we were looking for. They, they were arrested. There were many names being thrown around on the internet. Uh, those people had nothing to do with this. We, we vetted them and, and everything. They, they didn't have anything to do with these murders. And now the district attorney will decide on more charges against the pair since there was the death of that unborn child. The DA, Joe Gonzalez, tells us he intends to prosecute, quote, to the fullest extent of the law. For now, the father and son remain behind bars. Bonds again raised this morning as more charges were added. They stand at $600,000 for the father and $2 million for the son. We've just got new mug shots of the father and son charged in the shooting deaths of the expectant parents Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra, along with their unborn son. Ramon Presidio is accused of helping his son Christopher cover up the crime. They say the murders happened during a drug deal days before Christmas. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jonathan Martinez. I'm Mandy Noel. It's been eight days since the bodies of Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra were found in the parking lot of an apartment complex on the northwest side. Tonight we hear from a father who says the arrests make him feel a step closer to justice. And News 4 San Antonio Stephanie Esquivel spoke to Matthew's parents who are now left with lots of questions. It was like a, a weight lifted, you know, off my shoulders. Uh, I was already getting anxiety. Uh, what if, you know, what if we don't get a, uh, what if no one's ever arrested for these um, murders? And um, 
at least that part, uh, I could start, uh, you know, getting closure on that part that we can hold someone responsible. Matthew's dad, Gabriel Guerra, and his wife, Raquel, say they are grateful arrests have been made. They feel this is one step closer to justice. Tonight, they are still questioning why police believe 19-year-old suspect Christopher Preciado pulled the trigger. You know, I may never get some of the answers that I want. You know, I still, even after the affidavit, I don't know exactly what happened, if it was inside, outside. The Russ report states the killings happened during a drug deal. Like I tell everyone, he wasn't perfect. He made mistakes. I'm just, uh, I'm just upset that he never got the opportunity to turn his life around. Gabriel says he talked to Matthew several times, trying to influence him to make better choices. There are certain situations you don't want to put yourself in that could jeopardize you not being there for your family. Because I told him, a dad, you got to be there every single day. Although Gabriel and Raquel admit that Matthew and Savannah put themselves in the situation that led to their death, they want Christopher to face the harshest consequence possible. And in my opinion, a life for a life. He didn't even give my grandchild a chance to live, and I feel he deserves what he he did to them. Gabriel says he also wants a harsh punishment for Christopher's father, 53-year-old Ramon Preciado. Preciado is accused of helping his son hide the bodies and get rid of evidence. Absolutely not. Um, you know, I was always there for Matthew, but one thing I, I never did was I never bailed him out. You know, I always told him there's consequences. The Guerra family says they will also push for a third capital murder charge since the young couple's unborn son is also a victim. Absolutely. Most definitely. I'm not sure why that hasn't happened already. Stephanie Esquivel, News 4, San Antonio. Okay, so here's a recap of what police have shared about this case so far. Police say 19-year-old Christopher Preciado is believed to be the person who pulled the trigger, killing both Soto and Guerra. His father, Ramon Preciado, is accused of helping his son move their bodies. Both were arrested at their home last night. Investigators say they were able to track them down using information on Savannah's cell phone, which they found in her car. Christopher, uh, we believe, committed the murders of, of Matthew and Savannah. It, it, it appears to be a narcotic-related narcotic deal that, that went bad. Uh, Christopher is charged with capital murder. The district attorney's office will decide whether to add a third count of capital murder for the couple's unborn son and will also decide whether to pursue the death penalty. Ramon is being charged with abuse of a corpse. Robert Price is live this afternoon at Public Safety Headquarters where police chief and district attorney have just wrapped up a news conference. Hey, Robert. Good afternoon, Diana and David. Chief William McManus and District Attorney Joe Gonzalez spoke for about 15 minutes late this morning, offering their first public comments since these arrests two days ago and making a few new headlines in the process. First off, let's tell you what the chief says. He says the gun has now been recovered. The gun believed to be the murder weapon. This happened during a search yesterday of the home of Christopher Preciado, the 19-year-old, the same home the 19-year-old shares with his father, Ramon. Now, as for whether the DA will seek the death penalty in this case, Joe Gonzalez says it is too early to say. Quote, he does not want to put the cart before the horse. However, something he would address was whether the unborn child of 18-year-old Savannah Soto, baby Fabian, would be included as a victim in these new charges. Here's a listen at what he had to say about that. Clearly, we have enough to charge uh, Christopher uh, with uh, Preciado with capital murder because we have two adult victims. But under Texas law, when an unborn child, and, and it's under what, whatever period of gestation, uh, is that unborn child is considered a per person under Texas law for purposes of including an unborn child uh, as an additional count for capital murder. Now, one more thing to pass along here. The chief says an additional charge has now been filed against Christopher Preciado, the 19-year-old. Abuse of a corpse. That's the same charge his father currently faces. Tears and heartache as loved ones shared how much they're going to miss 22-year-old Matthew Guerra. <laughs> Briefly setting that pain aside and focusing on Matthew's cheerful and silly personality. Matthew's father, Gabriel Guerra, says he thought the services for his son 
We're going to have to be closed casket. Because of the time of the murder and the time the bodies were found, um, I'm not able to have an open casket for Matthew. With the help of Mission Park Funeral Chapel, Matthew's family was able to see him as they shared some final farewells. Matthew's funeral services will be Tuesday morning at Mission Park Funeral Chapel and his burial will be at San Jose Burial Park. Sabina and the young couple's unborn son Fabian will be buried together at a separate location. The dates for their services have not been announced. To new developments now in the capital murder case of Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra. Tonight, San Antonio police have arrested a third person connected to their murders. 47-year-old Myrta Romanos. According to the arrest affidavit, her gun was used in the murders. She's believed to be the stepmother of the alleged murderer, Christian Preciado and Ramon Preciado Jr.'s wife. Ramon is Christian's father. He is accused of helping Christian move the bodies. According to SAPD, Romanos is the final suspect in this case. We were able to develop information from surveillance video uh, that shows Miss Romanos involved the night of the murder. Uh, that video surveillance shows her at the home right after the murders and she was seen on video surveillance leaving in that black truck that we all saw on the surveillance video uh, and then returning to her home with uh, Christopher and Ramon in that truck. Romanos will be charged with three felonies, altering, destroying, or concealing a human corpse, abusing a corpse, and tampering with evidence. SAPD believes all suspects are now in custody. As of right now, are you under the impression there are any more suspects? At this time, we're confident that there's no more suspects. At this time, we're, we're confident that these were the three individuals that were involved in this case. Police would not say where the murders of Guerra and Soto happened, except that they know it was in the area of the suspect's home. Melissa Vega at the live desk happening right now. We are still waiting on the official booking photo from the Bear County Jail of Mirta Romanos, but we do have some new video coming into our newsroom tonight at the magistrate. Our camera is capturing Romanos in the very preliminary stages of her criminal proceedings. Again, she is facing three charges, including abuse of a corpse, tampering with evidence and altering, destroying or concealing a human corpse. All three felony charges, each with their own bond set. And we learned just a short time ago those three bonds total to more than a million dollars. Of course, as soon as we get her arrest photo, she's currently still going through the process of getting booked into the Bear County Jail. We will share that with you. That is the latest from the Life Desk. Mandy. Just one day after laying his son to rest, Matthew Guetta's father says this latest arrest is right on time. News 4 San Antonio's Stephanie Esquivel tells us the third arrest opens the door to justice and closure. Call me Pops. And just uh, the smile he would put on my face. An excruciatingly painful time for Matthew Guerra's father, Gabriel, just one day after Matthew's burial and seeing his unborn grandson, Fabian, for the first time. It's not the way I wanted to meet Fabian, but um, most definitely, you know, um, get to see him and, and uh, he looked like Savannah and just him being um, on top of Matthew and uh, being close to Matthew, it meant the world to me. A third arrest in connection with the young family's killing is made. The perfect timing with God and, you know, just giving me comfort or something to help me uh, during a difficult time. Gabriel says he wants the harshest punishment possible for the third suspect, Mirta Romanos, who is accused of helping to cover up the crime. But Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says adding additional charges doesn't seem likely right now. I certainly understand why the family would, would like to see uh, others, uh, the parents, for example, charged with with capital murder, but, but the law requires that we have some evidence of that. Regardless of the charges or punishment, Gabriel says he's relieved that police found the evidence needed to arrest Romanos because the other two suspects, Romanos' husband, Ramon Preciado, and her stepson, Christopher Preciado, were not telling the entire truth. They were trying to um, protect her from being arrested, like trying to take the uh, the... the the blame for everything and not including her. 
Yesterday was the one month anniversary of the young family's death and with this tragic loss for the Soto family also came a lot of nationwide attention. That's why the family wanted to keep today's funeral and burial services intimate and private. Savannah's paternal grandmother Rachel told me yesterday at Savannah's viewing and rosary it was the first time most of Savannah's family and friends saw her since she disappeared right before Christmas. Although these past two days have brought overwhelming emotions for her. She says that much of the Soto family feels a sense of relief to finally lay Savannah and Fabian to rest. Now, because this has been so much to process, Rachel tells me that the family is focused on grieving today, but this weekend they are planning a celebration of life for Savannah right here at Kenwood Park. I never got to talk to her again. The last time Pedro Soto spoke to his daughter Savannah, she was excited to give her dad his Christmas gift. She had just told me she wanted to give, give me my gifts for Christmas because she was going to get induced that Saturday and um, I never got to talk to her again. So a month later, here we are and I finally got my gift. A Harley Davidson t-shirt, koozie and artwork. And every year Christmas comes around, I'll take them out, you know, as a memory from my heart. I love them. This was all possible thanks to Matthew Guerra's father, Gabriel. Matthew's father reached out to me yesterday and um, said that he wanted to give me something. He didn't tell me what it was, but I kind of felt it was a good thing, you know. Earlier this week, police released the couple's apartment back to Guerra's family. Soto says Guerra's father's act of kindness allowed the families to reconnect and heal. Because that's the right thing. I know my daughter, his son would want that, you know and we're gonna continue talking. You know, these will be the last gifts I'll receive for my daughter, you know? A final gift that he says he'll cherish for the rest of his life. It's gonna be hard, you know? It's hard every day. You just gotta be strong and she, she's not suffering. You know, she's in a better place. It's here at Kenwood Park where Savannah's family and the community come to remember her and her baby Fabian. Soon, two trees will be planted in their memory. You know, like I tell my wife, I, I don't know if I ever accept this as God's plan or, you know, this is how it was designed to be. Gabriel Guerra, Matthew Guerra's father, says he speaks to his son every morning through prayer. And I would tell my wife all the time if the situation was reversed, at very best, I'd be like, Matt, turn yourself in. It's going to help you. It's going to look better. You know, I wouldn't be like, hey, let's go and dump the bodies and, and uh, let's have a Merry Christmas and put up a front and hopefully no one catches us. It's been over a month since 19-year-old Christopher Preciado was charged with capital murder. And his father, 53-year-old Ramon Preciado, was charged with abuse of a corpse in Savannah and Matthew's executions. 47-year-old Merta Romanos was also arrested and faces charges, which include abuse of a corpse. This can be in vain. Like some good needs to come out of it somehow, some way. Um, for one, there's got to be justice. And uh, some kind of healing on our part. While Guerra says time is helping him heal with his son's death, he wants justice and won't settle for anything less than the death penalty. Death. A needle in someone's arm. Even if they get life in prison, they would still be able to get notes and letters, and, and, and to me, that wouldn't be justice. Justice for a son who bought a baseball mitt for his baby, Fabian, and who wanted to play catch with him like they did together. A son who loves sports, his family, and the Lord. You know, he was, um, he was full of life, full of joy, uh, excited to uh, start the next chapter in his life and um, move on. And um, there was a lot of plans for him and Savannah. Unfortunately, they... Uh, didn't get a chance to um, to live out. According to Gabriel Guerra, the last time he spoke to the district attorney's office, they told him that no one has been charged with baby Fabian's murder. He says that information does not sit well with him or his family. Melissa Vega at the live desk happening right now as we continue to follow the very latest for you on the capital murders of pregnant teen Savannah Soto and her boyfriend Matthew Guerra, a judge granting the father of the suspected gunman Ramon Paciado a bond reduction for his charge in the case from $450,000 to $600,000. We're also learning during Ramon Paciado's bond hearing this afternoon, the mother of Savannah Soto was arrested on a warrant. We're 
told that Gloria Cordova, Savannah's mom, was arrested. That is video of her being arrested during a recess of Preciado's bond hearing there in the courtroom. We are learning from the Bear County Sheriff's Office tonight that Cordova was arrested on a warrant of failing to stop and give information. Now, this is a, in a totally separate case and a class B misdemeanor charge. Now, when it comes to the latest on the suspects in the case, just last week, Ramon Preciado's wife, Mirta Romano, she had her bond reduced from $1.1 million to $600,000. They are both facing abuse of a corpse charges. Preciado's son, Christopher, who is accused of murdering Matthew Guerra in Savannah Soto, well, he is still being held on a $2 million bond. New developments in the murder case of Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra. Today, a grand jury indicted suspected killer, 19-year-old Christopher Preciado, on an additional murder charge for the young couple's unborn son, Fabian. As News 4 San Antonio, Stephanie Esquivel shows us, the Guerra family says the additional charge is only fair. We received a call from the district attorney's office and they were letting us know that they received the case and that uh, today they'll be presenting it to the grand jury and they'll be giving uh, the grand jury the opportunity to um, have, state money, have its own capital murder charge. Matthew Guerra's father, Gabriel, says receiving that call brought a whirlwind of emotions. Matthew, along with his girlfriend, Savannah Soto, were killed on December 21. Savannah was pregnant with the young couple's first son, Fabian, and was scheduled to be induced two days later. It's an important day for us. It's, it's the beginning of uh, the legal process, and uh, hopefully this is where we get our closure and, and we get justice for for our loved ones. In Texas, murder charges can be filed for the death of an unborn child, prompting a grand jury to hear arguments in the case. Gabriel says it's only for the suspected killer, 19-year-old Christopher Preciado, face an additional capital murder charge. It hurts when you hear double homicide or, or um, Fabian's name not mentioned, and um, you know he was uh, he was a person too. He was a victim. Um, and it's only right that he gets his name, his justice, and people are acknowledged that his life was safety as well. Gabriel, his wife and daughter displaying their support for the additional charges using signs with Fabian's picture. Gabriel says he's thankful he at least got to see Fabian before he was laid to rest with his mother, Savannah. Obviously not the way I wanted uh, for me and Fabian to meet, but um, to have the opportunity to hold him, um, for him to, uh, be on Matthew's arms in the casket uh, and then a lot to you. The Guerra family anticipates emotional turmoil as legal proceedings continue, but they're devoted to fight for justice. Good days, bad days. Um, we're just uh, trying to stay strong for each other and um, everyone's hurting. Bear County court records show the trial date for Christopher Preciado is who's charged with shooting and killing both Soto and Guerra is set for May 20th. His father, Ramon, is also set for the same day, as well as Marta Romanos. This comes nearly five months after the deaths of Savannah, Matthew, and their unborn child.